Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's video focuses on Iran's October 1, 2024 ballistic missile strike on Israel, an event of large controversy. This is due to the complete information blackout imposed by Israel on the damage sustained, as well as Iran's reticence in exposing the impact of the strike perhaps to leave room for de-escalation in the looming conflict. To fully grasp the significance of this event, named Operation True Promise 2 by Iran, several key details need to be outlined. This operation involved the use of ballistic missiles exclusively, weapons that have a notably rapid time to target, requiring only about 10 minutes to reach Israel from launch points in Iran. The sheer psychological and strategic shock caused by the deployment of 200 such missiles is immense. With 182 reaching Israel and many breaching Israel's ballistic missile defense systems, this assault is an example of a shock and awe attack. Given the rapid time frame and the enormous firepower delivered with precision to military targets, Operation True Promise 2 might represent the most intense single conventional precision strike on military assets in history. The concentrated barrage occurred within a span of only a few minutes, with a level of fire intensity inflicted on military targets that is without precedent. The effectiveness and magnitude of the attack are of such an importance that it will likely to prompt many nations to consider acquiring ballistic missiles with precision strike capabilities. These weapons successfully penetrated what is arguably the most heavily defended airspace in the world, likely second only to Moscow's defense zone. It is without exaggeration an extraordinary achievement by Iran's missile forces. However, one key critical question remains. What was the actual impact of the strike? To understand this, we must recall Iran's 2020 ballistic missile strike on the US Ain al-Assad airbase in Iraq. During that operation, Iran clearly demonstrated the precision of its ballistic missiles. Based on this precedent, it is logical to assume that Iran used equally precise missiles in its strike against Israel, and not resorting to less precise types. However, there is a significant technical distinction between a missile strike on a target 500 kilometers away and a strike over a distance exceeding 1,200 kilometers while simultaneously performing evasive maneuvers. A longer-range strike increases the missile's flight time, potentially from 5 or 6 minutes to about twice that number and with each additional second, the margin for error in the missile's inertial guidance system incrementally increases. Additionally, aeroballistic missiles tasked with penetrating advanced ballistic missile defense systems require guidance systems that remain active throughout the flight and up to the time of impact. During the Ain al-Assad operation, the missiles didn't need to defeat sophisticated missile defenses, allowing for types with simplified guidance systems. They only needed guidance during the boost phase, and wind correction during the direct descent into the atmosphere, reducing the burden on the missile's guidance system. Therefore, while Iran's missiles showcased impressive precision in 2020, the more complex scenario in Operation True Promise 2, where targets were farther away and protected by advanced missile defenses, required a higher level of technological sophistication in the missile's inertial guidance system. Specifically, this mission involved the Kbar Shikan 1 and 2 missiles, both developed by the IRGC Aerospace Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization. These missiles were designed for the high-end spectrum of missions like this, striking an enemy at maximum state and ideally targeting the ballistic missile defense systems themselves. While the Kbar Shekan-1 was deployed in the April 13, 2024 strikes of Operation True Promise 1, the more advanced Kbar Shekan-2 made its debut during Operation True Promise 2. Although Iranian media claimed that an even more advanced missile, the hypersonic ballistic missile Fada-1, was used during the operation, this has not been confirmed through footage. The confirmed Kbar Shikan-2 is hence the most advanced missile verified to have been deployed during the strikes. At this juncture, another crucial aspect of the operation must be highlighted. Specifically, the significantly higher impact rate and successful penetration of Israeli missile defenses compared to the strikes in April. In the April strike, Iran launched approximately 100 ballistic missiles, half the number used in October. It is believed that Israeli defenses, although strained, were able to intercept a significant portion of the attack at the cost of expending a substantial number of Arrow and David Sling interceptors. However, by the time of the second strike in October, 
Iran had recalibrated its salvo in quantity and quality, adjusting both the firepower and the mix of missile types to decisively overwhelm and visibly defeat the Israeli ballistic missile defense complex. The use of the K-Bar Shekhan II likely played a pivotal role in this success, as this advanced variant may have been tasked with neutralizing Israel's vital ballistic missile defense radars. The precision demonstrated by certain missiles during the October strike confirmed Iran's capability to carry out point strikes on stationary targets, such as the mentioned radars, which are essential for the functionality of the missile defense system. The few available highly expensive radars resent single point of failure elements for the whole Israeli ballistic missile defense complex. In regards to targeting such radars, it is worth noting that Iran has acquired high-end space-based optical reconnaissance satellites from Russia. This strategic capability appears to have been part of a broader exchange, with Iran's supply of Shahed-136 one-way attack drones to Russia, drones that have significantly impacted the war in Ukraine, forming Iran's contribution to the deal. With access to such space-based reconnaissance, Iran has the capability to identify the stationary ballistic missile defense radars and conducted a decapitation strike on them by using advanced missiles like the K-Bar Shekhan II. This theory explains why Israel's ballistic missile defense system's response, in terms of interceptors launched, was significantly lower than in April, and why the Iranian missiles had much greater success in penetrating Israeli defenses. A key question emerges from this. Is the K-Bar Shekhan II capable of flying about 1,300 kilometers, perform a extended atmospheric glide in the later phase of flight, and combing this with evasive maneuvers to successfully strike an AN-2P2 ballistic missile early warning radar with sufficient precision to neutralize it? Interestingly, satellite imagery has provided insight into a small portion of the aftermath of the strike. Despite Israel's tight information blockade, and after several days that may have allowed to cover up the damage, a series of satellite images of Israel's Nevatim airbase were released, showing the post-strike damage. It became evident from these images that at least two missiles had directly struck hangars housing Israel's F-35 fighter jets and its airborne early warning radar and ISR aircraft. This detail is critical for understanding the precision of Iran's missiles in practice. Statistically, it is impossible that these impacts were coincidental, lucky shots by otherwise imprecise missiles. The likelihood of such a scenario is less than one in a thousand. These two hits were undoubtedly carried out by precision strike missiles specifically targeting those high-value objects. While some may question whether hitting just two precision targets out of 182 missiles indicates success or failure, this perspective overlooks the broader strategy displayed here. Iran employed a wide variety of missile types during the operation, including missiles with submunition and decoy payloads, as well as lower precision missiles like the EMAD. The EMAD, a decade-old missile designed for targeting large or soft targets, does not require pinpoint accuracy below 10 meters circular error probable CEP to be effective. They were intentionally employed against Israel's most hardened military infrastructure to reduce the cause damage, but display their destructive power. Considering these factors, it is both feasible and likely that degrading Israel's ballistic missile defense system, particularly through the neutralization of the critical early warning radars, was a key objective of the October strikes. The strikes against Tel Nof Air Base appear to show targeting of IDF Air Force assets and aircraft. But the late release of the footage and low resolution of the strike effects do not allow to draw firm conclusions. In the next part of this series, we will dive deeper into the consequences and details of the strike, analyzing how Iran's missile arsenal managed to suppress and eventually effectively defeat Israel's ballistic missile defenses. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.